You're listening to Soap Dirt, the latest in television entertainment news. Hey there, Days of Our Lives fans. Belinda from Soap Dirt, and it's time for our weekly prediction edition. As always, our predictions are based on confirmed and official network spoilers and also on recent episode activity. I'm so excited to unpack these for you, but if you haven't, please reach down, click subscribe so you don't miss any of our updates. So I've got predictions for Kristen and Alex, for Bob Everett, for Holly and Tate, for Xander, and for Constantine and John and Steve. So our first prediction, I feel like Bobby Stein is about to be unleashed on Salem, and I don't think he's a nice guy. Spoilers for next week for Tuesday, April 2nd, say Marlena hypnotizes Everett. Wednesday the 3rd, the next day, Everett tells Stephanie about what happened, but Jada isn't buying it. And Friday the 5th, Jada finds out she's still married to Bobby. And the new promo has a shot of Everett looking very evil. And I think that face might finally be Bobby. I can't wait to meet Bobby. I think Marlena might bring big bad Bobby out of hiding where he's been sleeping in the back of his alter ego Everett's brain. And I mean, who even knows after that? He might target Jada or Ray for Stephanie or Chad. I mean, who knows? I'm excited. Blake Barris plays a great villain and I'm I'm ready for this. I'm ready to meet Bobby Stein. It's overdue. And I feel like he might be unleashed on Salem very soon. My second prediction, I think Holly's bad influence on Tate is going to continue and grow. And I think Brady might have to order Nicole to rein in her wayward daughter and keep her away from his son, which is ironic because, you know, Nicole and EJ have all been like, oh, Tate's so bad and Holly's so innocent. And they had it completely wrong. Spoilers for next week on Monday, April 1st. Holly repeats the confession that we saw on Friday. We're going to have it again. And Brady Black is going to explode. At the same time, Tate is talking to his mom, Teresa, about him and Holly. Of course, she doesn't want him around Holly. Thursday, April 4th, they get to bring Tate home at last. And this is the last day that Jamie Martin Mann is in the role. And after his parents tell him, it was a scene from the promo, that he can't see Holly, and he agrees, he immediately makes a beeline over the Demera mansion, and they're making out. So I just suspect Holly isn't done breaking bad. She was into some serious stuff. She was just the other day swigging champers at that daytime event at a baby's christening reception. I mean, the champagne was supposed to be for a toast. It wasn't supposed to be for her to get, you know, crap faced off of it right after being in church this girl is truly nicole walker's offspring she's just naughty she was smoking weed which believe it or not is actually a very hard drug to break an addiction to at least according to episodes of celebrity rehab that i watched a few years ago i don't know how factual those were but they were that was a good show anyway you know she was popping those add meds but that's not what od'd her you don't od like that from taking too much ritalin it will give you a heart attack though because it's it's amphetamines it's straight amphetamines anyway th- so boys love a bad girl and i just really worry holly is going to drag tate down and by the way look for the new tate played by recast leo howard starting friday april 5th by the way in real life he's engaged to natasha hall who is the actress who's playing sloan as the temporary recast for the christening scenes People have questioned his age when they heard that Leo Howard was taking Jamie Martin Mann's place. Just for purposes of comparison, Leo Howard is 26 compared to Jamie Martin Mann, who is 20. And by the way, the actress who plays Holly, Ashley Pazumas, is 22. So 22 to 26 isn't that big of a deal. But on the downhill side of your mid-20s, it's kind of hard to be passable as a teenager. And just by the way, 26 year old Leo Howard is engaged to Natasha Hall. As, as I said, she's 33. She is seven years older than him just out of interest. But I do think it's a stretch for a 22 year old and a 26 year old to be playing high schoolers, but that's what we've got. Our third prediction, I think Xander's silence might be bought, or at least a bid might be made to buy his silence. So 
Next week, Xander and Sarah are looking into the evidence against him. Um, Monday, April 1st, Xander looks at the evidence that the police have amassed. And Wednesday, April 3rd, Sarah and Xander go to see Rafe to make a case for his innocence and why everything doesn't add up. Remember, Harris actually volunteered to help and said, oh, I don't really think you shot me, but I just can't remember because he's a liar. That dirty cop, I guess, is feeling a little guilty about framing someone who's innocent, but I don't really think he sees Xander as that innocent. But it's my dandy Zandy, so we got to stop this. Anyway, Xander proving that Stefan set him up would be a real big problem for Harris and for Stefan, and honestly for EJ too, because I think EJ will be dragged down with Stefan because Stefan has that recording, and it's not just on that phone. I'm sure Stefan has a backup in the cloud, and, you know, it would just, it's a whole house of cards. Harris already sniffed out EJ's complicity. And if the truth comes out that Stefan shot him, Stefan, of course, will go down for a long time. EJ might go down. Harris might wind up as a cellmate of his along with EJ and Stefan. You know, there's all kinds of stuff happening. Obstruction of justice, perversion of justice, abuse of power, tampering with evidence, aiding and abetting, so many things they could throw at them. So I just wonder if the Demeras may offer Xander a crap pile of money and EJ drops the charges, if Xander and Sarah will just drop the investigation, just shut up and go away. Of course, that's not a good look for the Demeras, but it's better than the alternative. I don't know if Xander would take the money and stop, but maybe. It depends if the right leverage is applied. We'll see how it goes. Our fourth prediction, I think Constantine may order the pawn to do something bad to Steve Johnson. So this isn't based on spoilers, but those recent episodes where Constantine said that he forgave John. And I know part of that was just getting into Maggie's good graces because he wants to marry her and take all that Kitiakis money. But I also think that he might legitimately have forgiven John for the daughter thing just because John wasn't mindfully targeting him. John was like a loaded gun and someone else pulled the trigger by sending him there. And that someone was Victor Kitiakis with Steve Johnson acting as his handler. Honestly, John Black doesn't know anything about it, but Steve and Victor, who's now gone, you know, knew. And now only Steve really knows. And he tried to say that he wasn't sure, but I mean, they were there on Aria on orders from Victor and Steve was facilitating all this. So I think Constantine may point John at Steve to take them both down because if John shot Steve or something, Steve would be dead or in bad shape and John would be in jail for it. And that would be probably a better revenge. We do know, of course, we've seen Constantine has the pawn card and he's already tested it out once. So I definitely think he's planning to use it. And I think he might use it against Steve. Our fifth and final prediction. I wonder if Kristen might target Alex when Brady thoroughly and finally and fully reads Jack's her crazy butt. So last week's episodes had Teresa and Brady freaking out over seeing Kristen and Alex kiss. And then next week on Thursday, the 4th, Alex asks Teresa to move back in with him. That's good because she's been sleeping in Tate's room and he's back home now. So I just suspect Kristen is not going to be happy at all if only half of their plan worked and it only worked out for Alex. So I, I don't see any way that Brady will dip his toe back into Kristen's stagnant pond of crazy behavior. She's not going to get him, not unless she has more masks or she's going to drug and rape him like she did his brother, Eric. So I could see her turning her eyes onto Alex after all the stuff she was telling Teresa about how hot he is, which is hundred percent factual and how much she's been enjoying his body, all that. Plus she's not going to want Teresa to get her happily ever after with Alex if she doesn't get hers with Brady. So we'll see how it goes. Those are all of our predictions. Please click subscribe if you haven't already. Definitely come back soon. We are here talking days of our lives, seven days a week on the most followed soap opera channel on YouTube. And as always, this is Belinda from Soap Dirt. And please drop your comments, do the subscribe thing, all that. Come back soon. We are here talking days of our lives again tomorrow. So stop back by. Thanks. Thank you for being a loyal listener. Follow us wherever you get your podcast because you don't want to miss the next episode. Soap Dirt is on all the major podcast platforms, including Apple Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and more.